thank you for the layout of exactly how, uh, how challenging the situation is that we face. Um, I want to move from that global view to Scotland uh, and to uh, basically set out some of the reasons uh, for feeling quite positive about what might be possible within Scotland. I'm going to speak about my experience of working uh, with the Just Transition Partnership. I'll tell you more about that in a moment. And I have put a little bit of paper in front of each of you, uh, which gives you some of the background. So first of all, <coughs> um, my own view is that if uh, the, the, the climate change is the greatest challenge that we face, then one of the most important tasks that we face is ensuring that climate change and the need to address it is properly integrated into the work and the uh, policies of the labour movement and the left. And I think we have to recognise that we're, that is still uh, business that we have to, uh, to carry on. We have not completed that. We've made quite a lot of progress thanks to people like Jonathan uh, and others uh, around the world working uh, from a, a base of uh, a certain amount of mistrust between the, uh, the, the left and the social uh, the labour movement for environmental movements, and we can come back to that. But we've, we've made a lot of progress, and I want to talk about the progress we've made in, in Scotland. <coughs> what we have now in Scotland, in very sort of, uh, sort of top, top line summary, is the Scottish Government has committed to creating a Just Transition Commission, which it thinks will probably be in place uh, early next year. Um, it's setting up a Scottish National Investment Bank, and it's very likely that uh, investing for a just transition will be part of its remit, whether exactly those words, but that's certainly a lot part of the purpose. It's looking at the option of a publicly owned energy company, and the task is to insist that that also should be dedicated towards driving a just transition. I'm using this term, what, what do we mean to mean it? We're going to start with a, a little bit of definition. Uh, words we use are that a just transition means moving to a modern low carbon economy in a way which protects workers' livelihoods, creates a new industrial base, and delivers a fair Scotland. <coughs> so, just those three things put Scotland a long way ahead of most other countries uh, in the world, actually, <coughs> um, as does the existence of the Just Transition Partnership. Uh, and by the way, each of those three things are, as it's put down on your bit of paper, these are core asks of the Just Transition Partnership. So, <coughs> that I, I, I will acknowledge that so far, these are words only, they're not yet these, but at least it's a, a, a good foundation to be moving on. So a little bit about the Just Transition Partnership, set up by Friends of the Earth Scotland and the STUC, the Scottish Trade Union Congress, in 2016. Um, the unions involved, they unite. Unison, the PCS, UCU, and CWU. Um, we also have other environmental organisations like WWS Scotland uh, involved, and uh, set up in place of opposition from at least one union, which is the DMB, and we can come, come, come back to that. But I think this is a new kind of alliance. Uh, um, envir environmental organisations working side by side with trade unions, trade union uh, structures is quite, uh, quite worth looking at. <clears throat> How it came about was um, we, some of us, have been talking, uh, I'm both a trade unionist and a climate change activist, and we've been talking you know, to the SDC uh, over some years. It was the loss of uh, 65,000 jobs in the uh, North Sea oil and gas sector, which got to the SDC and the unions to a point where they uh, were willing to talk about what jobs come after North Sea oil. <coughs> and, um, uh, it, it was both there's a lot of sensitivity about defending jobs, there's also an understanding that if those jobs, if that sector is lost from Scotland, uh, you lose a very large part of the industrial base of, of Scotland and you, you, you lose a lot of well organised trade union jobs. Uh, <coughs> jobs uh, uh, it's a sector in which the struggle for uh, trade union recognition has been heroic, but, been, but the establishment of uh, trade union organisations in the North Sea uh, and the, the membership which that gives to those unions is very, very important, as is the, the industrial weight of the North Sea there. <coughs> so there was a clear need uh, from both our points of view for the creation of new jobs which could, could provide continued employment for the people most affected. In the first instance, that's those in the fossil fuel industries. Uh, not only those, those 
but it, it's useful to focus on, on North Sea oil and gas. Some of the new jobs will be offshore, in offshore wind, wave, tide, tidal, decommissioning, but also they'll be provided by the economic transformation onshore to go low carbon. <clears throat> Examples of this include in transport, in space heating, energy efficiency, as well as electricity generation through renewable. I think Jonathan Lodding, this is very much the territory of the one million climate jobs. We didn't make this up. We, we learned this from other people, by the way. <coughs> um, to, to, ins to ensure that those jobs are generated and that they will provide good wages and, and in fact, possibly better conditions than the, the ones which are currently experienced, say, in the North Sea, <coughs> there will have to be a complete change in the way in which economic policy and industrial development is done in Scotland. <coughs> If you want to look at the ways it is done at the moment, look at some of the past. Look at what happened to coal mining. That's a classic example of an unjust transition in which the cost of that transition was borne by working class communities throughout the UK. <coughs> and still is, and still is, by the way. Look also at onshore wind, which is a success story in creating a, a, a very large uh, amount of and electricity generation from a renewable source, but the jobs and the profits have gone out with Scotland, and they haven't benefited our communities. Uh, they, they, all, the, all the turbines are made somewhere else. They're made in Denmark, they're made in Spain, they're made in Germany. <coughs> so the agreement we had, we set up between the SDC and the of Scotland, was about industrial policy. Uh, it was about the, the, the economic policy needed for this and the approach which will be needed. <clears throat> and that's got to include questions of ownership. Who owns the energy system? It's about, it's about how you uh, roll out a new, uh, new, new system such that you get local supply chains, local companies, and uh, uh, you know, building things uh, to, 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 to create the new, the, the, new, the new industry. That's therefore about investment. Who controls the investment? And it's also about fair work and union, union recognition in the new industries. And clearly, training and traditional support has to be part of that plan. So the outcome of this is an alliance which has facilitated the trade unions having a voice in the debate about climate change, which in the past has been seen as an environmental issue and therefore quite marginal to the Labour movement's main agenda. And you know, as an aside, let's not call climate change an environmental issue. You know, it, it's a all kinds of issues. But, but let's not allow it to be put in hold in that way. But it's also allowed environmental organisations in Scotland to have a much increased input and purchase on economic and industrial issues. <clears throat> I do think this is fairly unique to Scotland. Uh, <coughs> I mean, I'll come to, to some very specific um, examples of that, but um, the benefits have been a you know, we, we set this up in 2016, and you know, by the September 2017, the programme of government said, Let's have a Just Transition Commission. Let's have a Scottish National Investment Bank. So we, we were obviously pitching these ideas into a circumstance where you know, there were some half open doors anyway. We can talk about the politics of Scotland and why that is, etc. But I, don't, I do think it, it wouldn't have happened unless we'd come together and that, that asked for them. <coughs> um, so the, just to suggest to, just to, to, to ensure that we understand the context of that, you know, we, we have a Scottish government which has a, at least uh, it's halfway uh, looking in the right direction on climate change. It's got a climate change plan. It's starting to, to a new climate change bill. We are having some difficulty persuading the Scottish government to put a target for a zero carbon economy into that. But we, given the politics of Scotland, we probably will get that, even if it's not quite early enough, even if it's 2050, not 2040. We've got the energy strategy, which does talk about the, <coughs> about the same kind of terms about creating jobs out of this transition. Pretty, I think you may, may have noticed, you know, there's a big shift in the way that Nicola Sturgeon presents the future of the Scottish economy these days. It's much less oil focused. It's much more this, this you know, shiny, shiny new. Uh, the, all the positive benefits of shifting towards a, a low carbon economy are quite often. Uh, heard from Scottish government politicians, but they are still a government which supports to the hill the oil and gas industry. They are still a government which seeks, and Scottish enterprise and this, they seek maximum economic recovery of oil and gas from the North Sea. So they're looking in both ways, but, but see, just for the moment, let's look on the positive side of that. <clears throat> so
So, <clears throat> what we also hear is that in this debate about setting, you know, should we, when should we set the net zero target in Scotland, the sort of thinking politicians are saying, is this possible? Let's talk about feasibility. That's a fantastic step forward. It's like saying, right, how do we actually do this? Right? How do we decarbonize our transport? How do we decarbonize heating a building? Right? And I have to say, you know, the, although we know that this can be done, but getting it done is not a simple job. So the, the talk we've had about just transition, which is necessarily been about how do you invest in these things, what investment do you need when, how do you make sure that it's done in the right way, etc., has been a very positive contribution to that debate about whether, whether you know when you set a, 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 a net zero target. So the Just Transition Partnership has been put into that, and as an example, two days ago, Dave Watson, um, of the Deputy General Secretary of the SDC, was giving evidence to the Environment and Climate Change Committee of the Scottish Parliament about these issues. And I think that's a really interesting step forward. <coughs> Other outputs from the partnership would be on the consultation on the publicly owned energy company, um, on energy strategy itself. And where it hasn't been possible to have a joint position, as I'll explain some of the differences which have come up, come up in, this, in this working together, each of our submissions say to the um, Scottish Affairs Committee of Westminster on the future of oil and gas for the STUC and for the of the Earth have referenced this concept of just transition, or similarly on the Scottish National Investment Bank. So, this, you know, I, that the trade union voice is heard in these debates in Scotland is to me perhaps the, the biggest signal of a, a change uh, that has been achieved through this kind of work. I want to reflect in a couple of minutes on some of the issues which arise um, in, in doing this because I think they're quite, quite useful to pick up on the discussions which come along. But just to finish off, the first issue which comes along is to what is this transition? What is the transition to? It's a just transition, it's got to be socially just, it's got to be adopted in workers. So, um, for me, it's really important that this is about fixing climate change. You can quite clearly apply the idea of a just transition to other things, like a sustainable economy, being totally green, like, or, or, or whatever. And actually, it came out of the uh, issues around environmental consequences of industrial plants. So, so, but at the moment, I think it's very important it's about climate change, and, uh, uh, rather than a much broader um, set of issues, because that's it's the, it's the sort of specificness of that that allows these alliances to be built up. Um, then, even within that, is it about zero carbon? Is it about net zero emissions? Or is it about low carbon? And I have to say that within the relationship with the trade unions, that's always coming up. Because at this moment in time, some of our trade union uh, allies, in particular in industrial uh, unions like Unite, have not got around to say we are for the zero carbon economy. We can say low carbon, or we can say moving towards low carbon, but we often can't say let's do it quickly. So, so, so there's a set of issues there, which is about working with the trade unions who want to work with us. There's another set of issues about the positions taken by, for example, the GMB union, which if anyone's in the GMB, let's talk about it. But uh, basically, you know, the, the GMB stand up in Scottish Labour Party conference and say, just transition is the empty, empty rhetoric of movements who don't care a thing about our members' jobs. Uh, then this is not a helpful contribution to the challenges which we face. <coughs> what does just transition mean? This is a, um, uh, a discussion which we could sort of have as we go through. Um, a very limited version, which is kind of popular in government circles, uh, is, oh, is a transition going on? Is a transition going on? It's going to happen. Let's make it just. Let's add some stuff on the edge of this, which is about supporting some workers in getting the skills to do some new jobs. <clears throat> I think we have to say very clearly no to that. Because there has to be as much emphasis on the concept of the transition happening as, as making a just one. And in fact, the biggest failure in terms of justice would be if the transition does not happen, as Jonathan has so clearly uh, pointed point out. Or if it's too slow or inadequate. So, in my view, the, the transition will not happen unless it is just. Unless 
People, trade unionists, people in communities want it to happen because it's so obviously a good thing in all sorts of terms, in terms of social justice, in terms of employment, in terms of equity and so on. And we won't have the movement which will ensure, ensure that it does happen. <coughs> Who owns this concept? Because it's becoming a contested concept. And again, I'm just going to throw it out. Is it who, who drives this? Is it to be driven by the state? Is it to be driven by the political parties which attempt to control the state? Is it come from? Is, is it the trade union bureaucracy? Do they have the main sort of focus on this? Uh, union members, the climate change movement. Um, these are important questions because it affects whether this is a kind of a top-down thing, which we, which we, you know, the content of what I've described is largely top down, it's to be done by government, it's going to be, it's about investment, it's about you know, and so on. Or is it a bottom up thing where we engage people in communities in creating their own futures? <clears throat> uh, there's going to be no straight, straight answer to that. I just think we need to know that, 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 uh, that we always need to be uh, focusing on both ends of that spectrum. <clears throat> um, just to be clear, um, it's useful to, to bear in mind that the term originates within the trade union. Uh, and so quite often we do find, even within our discussion, for instance, discussion on the Just Transition Commission, we are finding that we have to remind politicians that the trade union participation, the trade union voice is central to this debate, because quite often they, they understand it in quite different terms. So I'm just going to wind up, because um, I, I think that's enough of those points, but I, I just think looking to the future and referencing back Jonathan's perspective. Um, we are in a struggle against uh, climate change and we're in a struggle against those forces who don't want to act on it. But that to me means which we are in a struggle for economic democracy. We are in a struggle to assert that public and uh, human needs have to, deter be, to ter determine what the economy does. Uh, we have to be, for the first time really, saying uh, control over the global economy and its outputs is central to the future of humanity. And it's that connection to how we manage our economy, which is part of this foundation of building an alliance with the labour movement, within the labour movement, around tra tra uh, ta uh, tackling climate change, because quite clearly uh, the labour movement has, through its entire existence, been uh, attempting to affect the outcome of markets, the outcome of where we manage uh, our economy. So, economic democracy, the capacity to determine the, the, the way the, the world economy works, has to be at the uh, root of this as well. I hope that's been a useful and, you know, quite positive look at what's happening in, in Scotland, that we understand some of the challenges uh, in making that, uh, as I say, moving from the words to the deep.